It is finally done. After weeks of attempting to reach round 50 with only the Essex Model 7 in Black Ops 4 Zombies, I have finally done it. I have completed one of my most requested challenges without using specialists or grenades. You know what's also interesting though? The game's not even over yet, and if you guys reach 2,000 likes on this video, which I know is a lot, I will try and extend this game to round 100. I can't promise it, but I will definitely try and I will make another video on it. And as always, I get challenges for videos in my comment section, so comment some more painful challenge suggestions for me to try out, and as always, I'll take the top 4 and let the Patreon supporters go and vote on. So enough shameless promotion and like farming, let's talk about how this was actually done. If you're unfamiliar with the Essex and why this is probably the most difficult challenge I've ever done, let me explain. On round one, it takes two body shots to kill a zombie with something that is labeled as a tactical rifle. So it's basically a nerf gun with a long barrel and it's going to cause me lots of sleepless nights filled with pain and suffering. I would say it's basically Black Ops 4's version of the Car 98K from World of War if that gives you any comparison and if you know a lot about zombies, so needless to say it's probably the worst gun in the game. My first attempt was on 9, where the basic idea was for me to get through the first few rounds and just build up some points. The one upside of the Essex actually is that it does have a decent headshot multiplier where it can one shot zombies to the head up until round 5, but after that it very quickly falls off as a zombie's health begins to scale, especially because you need to do the trials to open pack punch that spawn in boss zombies with loads more health than regular zombies. That's why on round 5, I absolutely got my fucking face kicking by one of the bosses. That was a warm up game though, just to try and find a strategy, so I just kept going. I'm like, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. And eventually that game ended up an absolute disaster after taking two downs within the space of about a minute because there were four axe throwing zombies, a blight father, and a horde of zombies chasing the guy who looks like an idiot running around with an Essex. My next game, things were looking pretty good at the start. I got through the trials, fully upgraded my Essex, and I was feeling pretty good until round 23 where the blight father just tongue fucks me out of existence. Dude could have at least bought me dinner first, but hey, I mean, I guess I'm not worth that much, am I? But this also brings me to one of my biggest gripes from this entire challenge. Who in the fuck decided it was a good idea for the Tigers to have aimbot and be able to change their direction mid-air while also taking half of your health every time they hit you? Because whoever they are, I'd probably still appreciate you because you work on zombies and I love you, but still, I would be angry at you. But this was basically the most frustrating part of this challenge because at least with the axe throwing boys, I could keep them all until the end of the round and just shoot their arms off. But with the tigers, they take like five shots to kill and there can be up to four or five of them spawned at once. That shit is absolutely ridiculous. But let me get back on track here. So after what? I would say 50 rounds of doing this challenge, I finally remembered that the challenge podium exists and I completed the first challenge which gives you an extra self revive which is great, but unluckily I had to use grenade kills to do so. Luckily I didn't reach round 50 this game so it doesn't really count as cheating so you know that's at least good. On round 30 I got tongue fucked again by the blight father and on round 36 I finally died for realsies and that was my game over. By this point I had been playing for a couple of days just attempting this challenge over and over again and after this game that's where my personal best just stood for a while. I seemed to just hit a wall where I was taking downs in round 4, round 6 and just generally not playing well at all. That's why after a game where I took a down on round 24 I knew things needed a change of pace and 9 really just was not going Going to work out for this challenge. I really don't like switching maps a lot, especially when it's a challenge like this, but this time I really had to. After a bit of thinking it over, it finally hit me that why the fuck have I not been playing on Tagged or Toten this entire time? Like, am I actually this stupid? Because first off, Tag doesn't have boss zombies, which are a big hurdle for me to overcome, and secondly, there's no tigers. It truly was a match made in heaven, and this was probably the change that I needed to finally get over that hurdle in this challenge. And I also decided to change up the strategy that I was using in general. Up till this point I was using basic perks but I always had a wild card in there like Deadshot or Zomshell to try and give myself a little bit of an extra advantage. Never thought I was going to be using Zomshell in a challenge but that's partially because I've never used the thing at all so I mean that's kind of cool actually that we finally got to use it. If you've never used it and you don't know what the fuck it is basically it creates a weak explosion so yeah 
first time and probably last time I'll ever use it. Anyway, so going into this game, I asked Twitter if I could use specials or grenades and it was split enough that I decided against it and I was just going to try it out as I always have been. But instead, we pulled out the goodest boy of them all, Luna. That was the big key change that I made to this game. Luna deserves all of the belly rubs in the entire world for being an absolute giga chad and helping me get through these tough times. All my homies love Luna. But you'll find out why in a few minutes. And back to the game. Uh, basically, it was fairly uneventful in the first few rounds where I was just building up points and thinking about where the hell I'm actually going to be training up zombies for a high round. By round 14, I got the golden pack-a-punch and I was given turned as my AAT right away, which was fantastic and that is absolutely what I want on my gun. You may also notice that I changed up my elixirs a little bit too. Don't worry, I don't use them very often and I could have used more powerful stuff or use these more often, but these were pretty much just there to speed things up a little bit if I felt it was getting a little slow or if I was in a tight spot and needed to get out. Once we started to get into actual high rounds and I couldn't just keep killing zombies one at a time, my first training spot was in the spawn room and to put it kindly, it just didn't work out very well at all. There's a lot of precise jumping involved and when you're as stupid as me, that's not going to be a successful duo. And okay, being fair to myself a little bit, it also doesn't help that when even you're when you're on round 20, it can take 7 to 10 shots just to kill a single zombie and when you really want to hit headshots every single time they're shooting, to just juggle all that is really difficult. I kept this up until round 23 when after just half a dozen probably close calls and only a few rounds of being there, I felt a change was needed to the strategy, but luckily I know about a nice little area next to spawn called the Lagoon. This area is actually used in regular high rounds as a way to get ammo back with secret sauce where you keep buying it over and over again, getting bandolier bandit, and slowly that refills your ammo because it gives you a couple of magazines every time. The reason that this area specifically is used is because the water that's pooled around in the Lagoon slows down the zombies enough that you can just keep running around in that area, and it's also fairly opened up so I thought this was going to be ideal and I found out that absolutely it was like this was another thing that just straight up changed the whole dynamic of this game was just going to the lagoon and from here the rounds weren't really flying by because I wasn't able to kill very quickly but they were moving and that's all I could really ask by the way I do want to address something and that's my use of Luna and turned in this game in Black Ops 4 you can avoid getting an alternate ammo type when you pack a punch so why would I put myself in a disadvantage by not getting a good one like turned but it's also not incredible because it has a 30 to 45 second cooldown after the turn zombie died, so I'm only going to be able to use it a few times around. Luna is even worse because it maybe activates once per round and kills maybe 20 zombies before heading out, but it is still a big change and it does still help me get through rounds pretty much at all or just quicker than I would have if I didn't have it. There's also just a straight up the factor of the Essex not killing zombies at all because the zombie's health does cap at round 35, but despite that, it still takes 7 to 8 shots in the head to kill a single zombie zombie and if it was to be body shots it would probably take an entire magazine. If I was to do this challenge without an AAT and without Luna my guess is it would take probably 15 to 20 hours of playing to reach round 50. And I am still killing a lot of zombies with the Essex throughout this game, but some of the load is taken by those other things and that's why I use them. It's not cheating, it's just making the game a little quicker. I love you guys, but I want to keep enjoying zombies as well. But back to the game though, so that's just the greatest part of this was that the strategy combo made the game fairly easy, but just really quite slow. I had a few close calls here and there with the zombies, but for the most part, it truly wasn't all that bad. The game did take me over 4 hours of playtime like this just to reach round 50, which is painfully fucking slow, I'm just gonna point that out. But despite that, we did it without specialists, without grenades, and without even taking downs. We reached round 50 with an Essex. And that is how you take a challenge that your community wants you to attempt as a joke and you make it your bitch. If you're mad about Luna, then take it up with someone who gives a shit because I'm not going to feel bad about hanging out with a good boy and using a perk to my advantage. As I said though, this game is still going and I'm on round 54 at the moment, so if this video gets 2000 likes, I'll try and reach around 100, but I will be using grenades and specialists from here on out because the rounds are just going to get exponentially longer. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, Toothpaste Man, Calvin Johnson, and Tall Chipmunk, as well as the channel members Marco, Brian Schneck, Toothpaste Man again, and Flawless Trick 
perks for supporting the channel. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can get lots of cool stuff for cheap as well as helping to support the channel. It'll all be linked in the description. Channel members also help out a lot and you get a cool badge next to your name on my channel. Hit the join button below the video or there will be a link in the description as well. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys more than vegans love telling you that they are vegan. Bye bye.